Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel. And welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Elasticsearch and Optane DC Persistent Memory and how we get 2x performance improvement. So recently I was playing around with um, some new technology at Intel called Optane DC Persistent Memory. And uh, I was playing around with using that persistent memory in a non-traditional way. I mounted it as a file system. And I found in doing so, I was able to do some interesting things with it. And one of the things I looked at doing was how could I improve performance of an elastic search cluster that I had set up? Because I found with some other um, tools like Kafka, for example, and check out my podcast on Kafka performance improvement using the same technique, um, I got a massive improvement in um, throughput uh, with Kafka. So I said, why don't I try the same thing with Elasticsearch? Uh, let's first look at what Elastic is primarily used for. A lot of people use Elastic um, to... Uh, do log analysis, and it's the whole ELK stack that people use it for. But if I look at just Elastic itself, Elastic is a great tool for normalizing data into JSON format. And I, you know, reading more and about the architecture and thing, things, it's really a distributed metadata manager. Um, so I can push any kind of data into Elastic and it can span over a distributed cluster. It's actually pretty slick a technology. So it's not a message bus like Kafka. It's really the index, indexing of the data that you have coming in. So I can have lots of data that's been indexed coming in, and then I can have lots of tools using those indexes because the data has been normalized. I can then use that data for lots of different things. So it's great for for combining uh, public data and private data. Uh, gives me full text search. There's some great, great tools with Elastic, uh, some great benefits. So I was looking at how could I improve performance? Um, I realized that Elastic is storing uh, this data on drives, right? It's storing it. Um, so my, my first thought was, why don't I use the persistent memory the same way that I did in Kafka? So let's talk a little bit about the persistent memory first. It is a brand new technology out of Intel. Pretty cool technology. Um, it comes in um, DDR4 format. So it fits right in your server in a DDR4 memory slot. Um, the DIMMs, or they're not DIMMs, they're really PEMs, persistent memory modules. They come in 128, 256, and 512 gig modules. So in a two socket system, I can have six terabytes of memory. And that memory is persistent memory. So pretty cool technology. Um, it's hardware encrypted, so you don't have to worry about someone stealing one of your persistent DIMMs and having your data. It's, it's all encrypted. It's tied to the CPU uh, with that encryption. So that, that's pretty cool. High, high reliability on them. Um, and uh, just really cool technology. I think it's going to be a game changer in the future. Uh, right now, it's already making some profound changes um, in uh, the way it's being used in tools um, in a lot of databases, like Oracle's starting to use it in their Exadata platform, as well as uh, SAP HANA, for example. But let's see what we can do with it with Elastic. First, I need to understand the different ways that this uh, technology can be used. The first way is what we call memory mode. Now in memory mode, I'm using that persistent memory just like normal memory. In fact, what really happens is your DDR4 memory that you have in there acts as a, as a cache to the persistent memory. Because the persistent memory is not quite as fast as the DDR4 memory, we use that cache layer to to give me the speed that I need in a majority of my applications. And in this mode, we do pretty well as far as um, speed. Um, it's pretty comparable to just straight DDR4, and in most applications, you won't see a change at all. Now, mo another interesting mode, and the mode I like to play around with the most, is the AppDirect mode. Now, in the AppDirect mode, I can write an application 
so that it writes directly into persistent memory. Now, this is really cool because I no longer have to uh, take a data structure, a complex data structure, marshal it, and stream it out onto a file system, which uh, could take a lot of time. A lot of time is wasted in doing that. Instead, I can go directly from um, directly into memory, and it's persistent. So that's pretty cool. Uh, very cool technology. Now, another thing I can do with this app direct mode is I can actually create a non-volatile memory file system that sits right on the memory bus, which is so much faster than the NVMe bus or even the SATA bus. So I took this concept of let's create an ultra fast file system and let's run um, Elastic on that ultra fast file system. So I had to learn a little bit about the architecture of Elastic to find out what parts I should run in the file system, uh, the, my ultra fast file system, and which parts would I leave just going uh, where they currently are. And can I make those changes with just a configuration file? So I first had to learn how to use the Linux kernel commands for manipulating this persistent memory. And the first command I learned was called IPMCTL. So IPMCTL stands for Intel Persistent Memory Controller. Now this is a utility that lets me from the command line configure and manage Intel persistent memory. So I can allocate the persistent memory to run in memory mode or in app direct mode or percentage in app direct or percentage in memory mode. And there's lots of other tools you can do with that. You can, um, you know, change things around. There's, there's a lot of utility there. So that's available in the Linux kernel. The other command that's there is NDCTL. Now, this one is for non-volatile memory device controller. And this allows me to actually create namespaces and regions in that persistent memory that I created. So then I can mount that region as a device. Um, it actually creates a device for me, and then I can mount that device as a file system. And that's what, that's what I ended up doing. So check out those commands. They're great commands to learn on how you can manipulate uh, your persistent memory. I know you want to get some, your hands on some of this. Um, it's being sold uh, by all of all the major OEMs right now, so go out and get you some. All right, so let's take a look at um, performance testing of um, Elastic. So I went out there and searched all over the place. I found Elasticsearch Rally, great benchmark tool that we can use um, to try things. And it, 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 the benchmarks are pretty cool. They, they all go around the racing uh, type of uh, mentality where I've got distributions of Elastic. I've got races, I've got data, teams, and tracks that I run. Uh, the, uh, my race is on. So I can test lots of different things. So I wanted to make sure that I had um, rally set up. Um, also, it had logs and all that stuff. So the first time I set it up, I was running ES rally from my normal SATA drive, and Elastic was running everything, everything in uh, the PMEM drive. And I got some performance improvement. But what I found really quick was because I was streaming data off the SATA drive that was stored in my ES Rally, all these data files, I was limited by how fast I could push data into Elasticsearch. So it wasn't Elastic that was slowing down, it was ES Rally that was slowing me down because my SATA drive was so much um, slower than my PMEM drive. So what I did was I moved ES Rally onto the PMEM drive. Um, and that improved uh, my performance, and I got some really interesting test results. So one of the things I, I looked at was I wanted to see what the effects of this PMIM ultra-fast drive would be on Elastic. So I didn't um, run Elastic in a cluster because I wanted to cut out the network variability. I wanted to find where the bottleneck was and to see if this drive would, would improve that bottleneck of the drive right, of storing things persistently. So by removing network variability, I got rid of that. I also decreased inner service communication by getting rid of replicas. And I moved all the storage and queries were all running 
on the persistent memory drives because I found that I wanted to get rid of the variability of the SATA drive. So I just went with that. Now, if I was running a full-blown production test, it would be very different. I'd have different machines running over network, and I would quickly find that my network would probably be my bottleneck if I could get the drive running fast enough. So that's what I wanted to try. I wanted to take all that variability out. So let's uh, take a look at um, how, I, how I managed to move forward. First off, I allocated all of my persistent memory um, to be um, um, app direct mode. So I can mount the whole thing as a file system. Now I did this because first off, I wanted all of that um, drive space. And in this, in this uh, instance, I used 128 gig DIMMs. So I had 1.5 terabytes of uh, drive that I could use. Now I also know from previous tests that I run with Kafka, I get better performance if I allocate all my PMIM as um, app direct mode and that I'm only writing to that area. Um, instead of it being split, I found I get a better performance with 100% app direct mode. So I even skipped the 50% app direct mode. I went right to 100% app direct mode. Um, better performance and more space for me to store these elastic ind indices. So let's talk about throughput. So ES Rally does a pretty good job at all these different um, statistics. So I took the median throughput on documents per second compared to the number of um, concurrent uh, races I was running at the same time. So this would be concurrent number of producers and consumers of data um, running through the system. So these are number of races that I'm doing. So if you look at these numbers, I can see with my SATA drive, um, I got a very simple, I got some very good numbers, right? And these numbers were comparable to what I saw out there that other people had published. So I knew I was running the test right and all that. With my PMIM drive, I was able to ingest almost twice as many documents per second. Now, this is pretty incredible when you think about it. No changes to code, just a configuration change. Basically, it's just where, where are you putting your elastic um, index files, right? And any other files that it has were all stored in the files in the ultra fast file system. So pretty cool improvement. Um, these documents double the speed uh, right off the bat. Another thing that we saw was response times to functions. So if I look at server response time, lower is better here, then I quickly saw that as, and what you would expect as the number of uh, concurrent races running at the same time as those increase, the, ser the re response time to those uh, queries or functions uh, would, would, uh, would go up. And that's what we see. But if you look again, almost twice as fast in response time with the PMIM. So from this simple test, we learned that the PMIM does have an effect where you are storing um, that persistence that Elastic needs, where that's being stored does have an effect on its speed. So using PMIM in this instance uh, was much better than your typical SATA drive. So if you want any additional information, I can send you um, how I did it. There's a great paper out there. You can contact me at darren.w.pulsifer at intel.com or hit me on LinkedIn at Darren Pulsifer um, and I, or check out the podcast. It does have a link in there to the document um, that we created that corresponds to these test results. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and embrace the digital revolution.